Hello again, I'm John Brennan for the Commonwealth Bank. Welcome to Final Night. And we have, as you can imagine, a loyal, noisy, warm as ever crowd and just buzzing at the moment and present to witness a repeat of last year's final. Two of the proudest schools, I think, in all of high school sport and they meet in this cup tie, Patrician Brothers Fairfield and title holders Holy Cross College Ride. Each school, let me tell you, has been in a cup final on four separate occasions. Fairfield being successful in 1975 and 78 and looking for their triple crown. And Ride finalists in 79 and 80 and winning their first cup final last year. So with the crowd uh, just literally teeming with excitement and colour, we've had some great gymnastics display and all out there. Let's introduce our, I suppose you could call him our perennial guest on final night, Herald and Sun Herald feature columnist Alan Clarkson and good to see you. Nice to be here. I'm looking forward to this match. I always do look forward to the Commonwealth Bank always. final. Well, all the matches really, but I think there is something electric about the final. The boys give that little bit extra and I've never, ever, ever seen one that I could regard as even just being an ordinary sort of match. They're always brilliant and I'm sure that the people watching at home here this morning are going to see something superb. I think this one is going to be one of the best yeah, we've seen, Alan. Last year, of course, um, uh, Fairfield lost to ride 15-11 and they only lost in the last 20 minutes. Can they reverse the role tonight? I think they can. They're, um, they're a fine team. Uh, I noticed in their run through that they beat Marshall and College Randwick on the way through, so they've got to be good to do that. Uh, I, I won't get that in. <laughs> <laughs> they're, uh, they're a beaut team. They've got uh, Peter Langmack, I think, he's a man, the, their captain, he's a man they've got to watch all the time. Superb, and he's clashed with Paul Bevan around the lock board, and what they do and how they control the play is just going to be something, I think, outstanding. Well, that's one thing, cranking uh, Alan Clarkson open for a tip. I said on 2SM okay. this morning, I fancied Patrician Brothers Fairfield just in terms of experience. They have four Australian schoolboy representatives. Fairfield has one. And uh, as I said, in terms of experience, I just go for Fairfield. Anyhow, Alan Clarkson, Ray O'Donnell, our statistician, as always, both with me for, I feel, a night to remember. Cup final night, the 2SM scholarship points, the three of us will be allocating towards the latter part of the evening, and we will be knowing tonight the deciding factor. Well, some dramatic and some emotional moments ahead for both schools, Fairfield and Ride. So after this break, we will be back, hitched up to the public address system for the crowd present to introduce the two teams in the 1982 Commonwealth Bank Cup final. Through the Channel 10 network, through New South Wales and Queensland, we say good evening to you, ladies and gentlemen, and supporters galore at the Leichhardt Oval. The teams are ready for the 1982 Commonwealth Bank Cup final, and first on the field will be the finalists for 1981, and in their fourth Cup final, Patrician Brothers Fairfield. And introducing number one and fullback, Franz Maranisi. Number two, a winger, Stephen Adams. Number three, centre, Michael Cartwright. Number four, Australian schoolboy representative, Max Mannix. Number five on wing, Duncan Wick. Number six, five-eighth, Andrew Yablonski. Number seven, halfback, Greg Alexander. Number eight, lock captain, Australian schoolboy representative, Paul Langmack. Number nine, second row, Robert Krislovic. Number ten, second row, Australian schoolboy representative, Tom Nichols. Number eleven, prop, Andrew Saltos. Number 12, hooker Anthony Marvello. And number 13, prop Australian schoolboy representative Mark Garner. And their coach, ladies and gentlemen, is Kevin Burke. 
and their substitutions number 14 Anthony Zapier, Shane McNamara 15, 16 Michael McFarlane and number 17 Brendan Esposito. All right now, ladies and gentlemen, the current cup holders and appearing in their fourth consecutive cup final, Holy Cross College Ride. Number one and fullback, Paul Daly. Number two, a winger, Lloyd Fraser. Number three, centre, John Monty. Number four, centre, Brendan King. Number five, wing Craig Woods. Six is 5'8", Glenn Stanton. Seven, halfback captain and Australian schoolboy representative, Scott Gale. Eight, lock Paul Bevan. Number nine, second rower, Paul Sirenen. Number 10, second row, Max Beecher. Number 11 and prop, Andrew Sinclair. Number 12, hooker, David Walton. Number 13, prop, Warren Roberts. And their coach, ladies and gentlemen, is Peter Bevan. The substitutions, as you'll see, number 14 is Dennis Lashmar. 15, John Perkins, 16, Ian McKenzie, and number 17, Michael Alexander. The referee tonight is Jack Danzy. Well, we're almost always appreciative of having a first grade referee officiating tonight and uh, one of our most esteemed controllers, I can assure you, Jack Danzy. Well, it's all happening at Leichhardt. Uh, banners, we've had cheer squads, some splendid uh, gymnastics and banner parades uh, from the schools, all the colour, and uh, each school has emptied out of the ground over a 1,000 students plus their supporters, so we have quite a fantastic crowd here. Fairfield in royal blue, in their royal blue, uh, light blue uniforms with the royal blue bars uh, running from the left hand side of your screen and Holy Cross College ride with gold jumpers and the maroon shoulders guarding the goal line to the right. Showdown time and I suppose you could say it's heart, nerve, sinew, will that takes to win a title like the Commonwealth Bank Cup. And that's what they'll need tonight as ride kick it off through the boot of Craig Woods and it's Fairfield getting first semi or cup final feel of the ball uh, within their own quarter and if it happens to be your first viewing tonight of the Commonwealth Bank Cup let me tell you that Fairfield have some pretty heavy mat uh, matillery out there in the shape of four Australian schoolboys. Max Mannix is number four, Tommy Nichols is number ten, Paul Langmack is number eight and um, there's another one Max Garner who is in jumper number thirteen and ride their sol solitary representative is Scott Gale and he's wearing jumper number seven. But it's Fairfield getting the ball out quickly to Big Garner headgeared tonight up to halfway before he's smothered over there by good cover from Holy Cross ride. But they're getting into it from the start, wheeling it out through Langmark. He's a hard man, uh, they'll a man who'll have to shut down as young Yablonski goes to ground in the first scrum of the evening, just almost on halfway. <coughs> they're not moving around they're not mucking around in moving that ball around and it's good to see and, and we're going to see a lot more of it because these both these teams love to move it around they uh, back up and their, their football it seems to be so automatic but so very very good young Alexander getting a cripple pass out there to Yablonski who swirls out of one but he's taken this time in center field and it was Scott Gale marking him well Fairfield now ready to bowl this ball around it's Langmark trapped to dummy half and over the top came Warren Roberts. If about 10 metres inside crosses um, the territory as big uh, Saltos, a tower of strength up front, gives them a lion-hearted stuff and gains about 10 metres through Alexander and um, misplaced passes means drop ball and in the nervous opening minutes. Coming up through Max Beecher and from dummy half it's Walton trapped. And ride though in possession, one minute gone. The nerves are on, the ball is swept. 
This is Daly up there in the line, and across quickly is Garner to stop his progress. They're keeping it on this left-hand side. This is Paul Bevan, a magician and uh, a fellow who scored three tries against Caring Bar, three against Parramatta Maris High, and he's a boy that they'll have to neutralise smartly. Scott Gale on a half break, left out of the air by Chris Levick, and put to ground by Monty. Still only 10 metres inside Ride's territory as Saltos takes off again, gains valuable ground uh, before um, it's Roberts and uh, Beecher have him. Alexander whips it smartly to Garner and the big prop creates havoc with his robust running. Just 30 metres out, whipping this ball out. There's a chop out, getting it up to uh, Nichols out. Mannix it is and taken by Motley. Good tackle because they'll have to look after Mannix. Coming from uh, Marvello with Alexander giving a lovely one to do. Oh, it's a break, he's coming across to get him and he's out of it, oh yeah! Try number one of oh, the emotion at the moment for Tommy Nichols as he broke it beautifully. Fairfield have exploded to life in the second minute. They lead 3-0. What a magnificent try. As we forecast, they're moving the ball about, they're backing up and that was just a superb piece of work by Paul Langmack. Yes. And subsequently taken by Tommy Nichols. It was Daly who came across around the shoulders, as you saw. But Nichols, who is an Australian schoolboy's boy, a grand veteran and a keen runner, as you saw. And there was no way at all that you could stop um, the second rower, uh, Nichols, uh, with, a, with a tackle like that. He had to be taken, his legs just had to be chopped out from under him. But what a beautiful pass from Langmack. He was a man that we mentioned earlier. Um, uh, his creative ability is uh, is well beyond his years, I feel. Uh, and that pass that he served up was as good as you'll ever see. Well, it's although it's only uh, early, Alan, but already Fairfield playing with all of their customary authority and power and pace, as we've seen in the opening minute of play. Well, uh, they had a rusty start at Forbes, and then they came back on the scene, and a dramatic revival happened the moment that all their stars pulled on that Fairfield boot. They outthought and ungunned their opposition. Lonsky in here with the conversion, and it's there. And Fairfield lead five points to nil after only four and a half minutes of play. Oh boy, what an opening. As I said, they've um, outgunned everybody, and Kevin Burke has them streamlined right into a ruthless machine once more. So Ryan, behind the eight ball, Andrew Yablonski, a great attacking sparkle at 5'8", has converted that try by Tommy Nichols. Oh, boy, what a mate. It'd be very difficult to see a better try than that one, I think. Chris Levick. Whoops. So not only was there the knock-on, but um, over the touchline, so a scrum, much to the disgust of Chris Levick getting back there in the pack. He'll give it a nice old serve, an extra one on that one. Alexander to feed. Rides ball. Scott Gale. The touch to Stanton. That little familiar twist of his, but didn't get him all that far that time. With Gale feeding Daly up on the line. Puts through beautifully. Monty on the burst. He's got the pace. He'll go over. Oh. Yes! <laughs> They hit back and say, hey, we're even. And it wasn't holding them once they got their intent and rhythm into motion. It's 5-3. Well, you know, this is the way it's going to be all the way through. They're just going to keep on scoring, these boys. And you can't say that was bad defence. That was just a superb piece of work. What's this? What? Oh, what a beautiful pass. From Paul Daly. A strong runner himself, but wasn't that a lovely pass to Monty, who had an outstanding game and earned points, incidentally in the match against Parramatta Maris Tai. Here it is again. Lap it up. It's magic. Held the pass up beautifully. Put him into the gap and look at him running. That's what I like about these boys. Uh, young Daly, I thought, was wrong with the way he attempted the tackle up there, but he's more than made amends now with that superb pass. Well, it's 5-3 after only six minutes of play, and Craig Woods, whose kicking boots have been a big factor in rides, wins this year. Has it planted just outside the quarter and 10, many, 10 metres in from touch. Can he woof this one in? What a start. The most dramatic start we've had in cup final history. Craig Woods. Woof. But uh, harmlessly by the left upright. So it's 5-3 and that's the score how it remains. Two companies that will be particularly rewarding tonight. 
uh, and rewarding two great schoolboy sides for their efforts in 1982. The Cup champions tonight will receive $4,000 worth of TV and or sound equipment from National Panasonic and electronic sales and rentals, while the runners-up will receive $2,500 worth of equipment. Again in 82, we thank these two marvellous companies for their tremendous support. They've been just so excellent over the years, and we look forward to their association in the Commonwealth Bank Cup in 83. National number one, electronic sales and service number one. You can't go better than that. It's good to see companies like that involved in schoolboy football. Um, they don't get the accolades they do connected with the major clubs, but uh, I, I'm sure that they do twice as much good and it's twice as much appreciated too when it goes to the schools like it does. Tommy Nichols honing in there to stop a forward run coming from Andrew Sinclair it was. It's Sirenham that goes without it and it's a pick up by Fairfield through I think Langmack. It is indeed Marvello coming right runs into uh, Sirenham's tackle and uh, feels the effect of it too because he's a tough mobile fella. Maddox moves it a dummy half for Fairfield straight away skirting They've stopped him just 15 metres out from Ride's goal line and Alexander puts it to Langmack on the right. He looks for inside support, comes the alley, Saltos over the top, David Walton, and he's trapped five metres inside Ride's quarter. Out it goes, Alexander the touch to Yablonski, coming onto it beautifully, Cartwright, but jammed by Glenn Stat. and all he propels himself at a tackles. Last one coming up on Fairfield, taking it, to, oh, Alexander trying to get it out to uh, Garner and um, turns it over to ride through Andrew Sinclair and boy out they out of a lot of pressure there. Yes, that uh, uh, he should have hung on there rather than get the ball away, um, whereas the opposition now have it. They could have taken the um, the scrum, of course, and taken the risk with it. Here comes Beecher. Can't afford to make mistakes like that, I feel, in, the, in a cup final, especially against a team like this. Max Beecher, tough, experienced ball and flag man for Balmain. Good pass. Siren and out wide, the big second rower comes. He's support on the inside, if he can get it now. Trailing in there and seeking out for it was Baron, uh, Bevan. But uh, that you saw the typical example of the brute strength and skill and running of Paul Sirenen. But it's Paul Daly trapped in centre field, the last on ride, and will have a scrum just short of halfway. It's Fairfield's territory. That's Sirenen, he's what, about six foot three, John? Six foot three, Alan, he's about 14 stone, he's only 16 and in the shadow side, I believe, for the Australian schoolboys. Nice school, boy. Champion. Alexander, though, braving up this right side. Around him, Scott Gale, Bevan, everybody. Waiting on halfway to get it. Coming now is Frank Maranese. He's a quite a spirited runner and a very reliable defender at, uh, at fullback, but they'll keep it on this short side. Saltos running into the tackle and takes Good it uh, from Andrew Sinclair. Mark Garner says, let me have a go. Nichols, oh. is, Nichols is trailing him. Can he get it to him? Yeah. Oh, look what it is. Tommy Nichols. Oh, something uncharacteristic of him. An impeccable ball handler. But not tonight. Not tonight. No, it was uh, it was an easy, a uh, relatively easy pass. Uh, and what a magnificent break by Garner. This boy's got a got a future by the look of him. Oh, he's got he's had rave notices, Alan, for see he's thundering tackles. Wait till you see him hit and make a few hits. Quite apart from his he's running, and of course he was a centre, you know, two years ago, but has he's been not, playing prop the last two years. He's obviously got the plenty of speed. Scott Gale trying to weave his magic before taken by um, uh, Yablonski and Paul Langmack there. Coming hard again is Beecher. You'll see him give 110% effort all night. He's wearing jumper number 10. Scott Gale decides to do a midfield thrust. Turning it over to Fairfield. Mannix has it. Trying to link up there over there with uh, Stephen Adams. But uh, he's brought to ground about uh, 35 metres out from Ride's goal line. And come Fairfield again. Whipping it out to Alexander, finding a runner in Krislovic, taking it up to the quarter. The boy who scored the opening try last year for Fairfield, with Marvello giving it to Alexander Ma uh, Langmack. Nichols, he's got him on the left, Garner. Retrieving, getting it back to Adams. Looks, oh, not a uh, forward pass. Forward pass, the referee, Jack Danzi, calls them back. We're receiving treatment for a ride player in back play, about 30 metres out from the goal line. But it's 11 minutes gone and Fairfield leading ride by 5-3. This time last year, or at halftime, it was 5-all. Yes, uh, it's 
Well, it's a cliffhanger all, and it will be all the way through. I was just trying to pick up who the uh, the player was that was hurt. I think it's Beecher. I think it's a penalty here against young Alexander, not retiring. That's the first penalty of the match. And um, Ride, who's had a golden year, Camera breathe five. relief, and Sirenin whacks it downfield 30 metres out from his goal line. And Fairfield uh, threatening the line again. Ride about to plough it away from their quarter. And it's Sinclair midway between the halfway and the quarter. And Walter Good makes run. a beautiful split from dummy half. This is a feature of his play and trailing it was Bevan. He didn't see him in time. Taken well too by Yablonski. Out it comes Gale. A chop out to Siren. And if he can get it out now, they've got three up. But he's tangled there by Cartwright and over is Langmack. And uh, they stop his progress. And Chris Levick was there as well. Comes Stanton, finds an inside passage for Daly. But he's looked after just on Fairfield's quarter. Walton again, firing a pass to Bevan. Bevan with the little step. Uh, he's well and truly contained just outside the quarter. And this will be the sixth coming up for Ride. Walton now, getting it to Scott Gale. He'll do the little chip, waiting for it held back, I thought. Coming up to take it, Frank Maranese, Jack Danzig allowing it to go on. And a penalty, I thought. Yes. It goes to Ride. Yes, and a deserved penalty too. Uh, uh, once again, the experience of Danzig. He waited just to see what was going to happen. When there was no advantage, he's awarded the penalty, and uh, as it should be, for a little bit of uh, holding back there. Yes, because it was Scott Gale with that little familiar float over the top. It, I'm sure it, it happens nine out of ten. It sits up beautifully for him, and he would have been away. And with all due respect, I really couldn't blame anyone for just holding anyone back at the, in a position like that, especially <laughs> a fellow like Scott Gale. I know uh, that doesn't sound as if it should, as it should, but uh, <laughs> uh, well, take it, it is a final. <laughs> Craig Woods then from uh, right in front. Oh, so easy kickable range, a chance to goal. And will he make it five all? Sees it well, hangs it in, it's five apiece. So Ride with Tiger in the tank and probably one of the most respected outfits in the state. They've attacked as a team, defended as a team, and uh, with players like Gale and Bevan and Sirenan as the ringmasters, tonight the Tigers expected to growl louder than ever. Yes, I've um, been a little disappointed. The uh They've been able to, both teams really, been able to uh, to make inroads, but especially that uh, beautiful run by Walton. And they've just got to watch uh, close to the rucks there, both teams really, because they're going to be in a lot of trouble. They've got some good ball runners in both sides. So bringing it away. And that was Craig Woods. Dropped by uh, Chris Levick. Chris Levick going after his man again. But this time it was Tommy Nichols to look after Sinclair. Back inside, it comes to Bevan, holding up the pass, gets it to Sirenin, and uh, he tries to make forward progress, but they harness him well right on the quarter. Three or four of them. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Bevan uh, almost just there on a half break to Nichols marking him, coming back. Scott Gale, little step, looked after by Yablonski inside, and Nichols was in combination with him. The left booter back to cover Stephen Adams. This is him now, only 15. And the chases uh, contain him 10 metres short of his own side of halfway. Again, Glenn Stanton very much into the action. Max Mannix and held by John Monty. And Walton over the top. Walton will mark him. Marvello will be a dummy half. Alexander picking up Ghana. And uh, Andrew Sinclair over the top, very mobile. And Stanton again was there to look after Ghana. Calling for runners. Gets him again in oh, Chris Lebeck. Isn't he a good one? Strong mm. and aggressive player. So not allowing you to play the ball. Yeah. And a fair field penalty it is. Oh, they're a glamour side, this pair field. The icing on the cake, five included in the New South Wales Catholic schoolboys this year. Four out of that five on the Australian schoolboys side. And uh, no wonder this Fairfield machine uh, has not faltered so far. It's five all, and we've had uh, 16 minutes of play in this first half. Marvello. 
taken by Siren. Stephen Adams, a dummy half. Another settler. Beecher around him. Langmack on the blind. Oh, lovely work. Garner gets it around to Garner. Beautiful. Oh, look. Uh, an unmistakable stamp of class on this fellow, Alan. Yes. Uh, he's, he's got everything, hasn't he? He's got a step. He's got beautiful hands. Oh, he's a bit the pass there was offside then, but um, he's um, he's got a lot of qualities about him, this young man. Serenin. He can hoist the ball and brings play up to midway between the quarter and halfway in his own territory. Bevan coming up with their customary four with some decoy work coming up. And it's Sinclair. A good game. And having a good game too, just mm. quietly. Mm. Walton through Scott. Stanton. Step to halfway. Garner was there. Arrested him. He did have. It. So the penalty from Jack Danzi goes to Fairfield. And the offender that time, Glenn Stanton. Yes, he didn't release the ball, and Mr. Danzi was right on the spot. For those who like to keep the penalty count, Holy Cross ride three, Fairfield two. And scrums, two all. Two all the scrums. Two fine hookers up against one another. Marvello. He goes upfield. Adams straight away to Langmack. And this time, ball and all stuff from Walton and Sirenen. Garner crisscrossing with oh. Nichols coming through on the flat. And taken just 10 metres out from Ride's goal line. Maranese, a dummy half. Alexander triggering it to the left for Yablonski. Mannix fires it out. He sets him loose, going for the line. They take him back inside the cart right up there is Langmack oh beautiful football from Fairfield throwing it around oh they're cutting him loose Fairfield five meters out back it comes now chopping out now gives it to Garner and uh, Ride come up with it yes they they've really got everything going for them they're starting to fire well now Fairfield and uh, Holy Cross they've got to defend and defend grimly as we just saw over there um, Stanton of course um, been very very uh, doing some marvelous work out there lovely work fairfield looking good lean and fit but it's scott gale with the ball probing up that short blind on the right uh, control though and sending it back inside for walton to try and do a little bit of his um uh, weaving work but he stopped just outside his quarter or just just within the quarter coming up and taking it heavily is uh, sirenin at least uh, warren roberts who good run puts in a gutsy performance too Back inside, chop out, Sirenin on a bust, hits the line, looks to punch a hole in it, but can't, Yablonski is there, oh, he's, for a 5'8", he's only small, Alan, but he's as tough as a button, mm. tough as a button. Here they come, Ride looked after, Beecher making that long run, midway between the quarter and halfway, Monty getting it straight away to Stanton, Stanton probing and taken by Garner, just 10 metres short of his own side of halfway. Yes, I like the way Jablonski, he, he backs up all the time. He's a very busy player. A lot of sparkle in his attack. Mm. He can split him in a wink, and uh, but oh, he gives an eye-catching tackling performance. I was amazed with his performance out there at the Sydney Cricket Ground against James Cook High. This is the boy with the ball now. Now Mannix, oh, and hit by Brendan King. A very punishing defender, but Jablonski is there and feeding uh, Cartwright. Jablonski again out wide to Duncan Wick. But look at the cover from Ride there. Two to take him. And ball and all stuff right on the corner. Fairfield though. Langmack goes forward for Fairfield. Oh, finding yeah. a runner beautifully in Maddox. He can't look around. And he's taken 15 metres out from Ride's goal line. It's all Fairfield. They're in the van. Yablonski, Cartwright up there. Chris Levick. Look at the tackling though. Without flinching there. Dropping him. This is Ride coming up and meeting their players. With Yablonski feeding uh, Alexander. Doing the scissors now with Saltas. And he's put to ground five metres out from the goal line. Coming back on the right again, Alexander himself looked after though. The ball is loose, picked up Maranese. Yablonski laying back, long pass. Wicks going for the line, hit by his opposite Craig Woods. 
back again, it's all Fairfield, but there's nowhere to go. Looking for it, Langmack, and he can't get it out, and oh, right, Wick has picked it up and looked after by Scott Gale, and oh boy, have they made some hits in that defence. Oh, it's that... just been grim and determined. That was incredible defence then, uh, as you so rightly said, uh, it, it had to be good, uh, John, otherwise there was going to be a try, because Fairfield just kept on pouring on the pressure there, but Ride's defence was equal to that pressure and put some pressure back on again, forced a, uh, an error at the, fin at the final there. Whilst you were commentating then, Alan, a few stern words delivered to Paul Sheridan, uh, rather a belligerent person on the field. Everything legitimate, though, in his play. He just has such great brute strength. And uh, referee Dan Z was uh, having a few words with him as Alexander goes for it. He'll be held up, though. Held up, says Jack held Dancy. Um, he was the try scorer James Cook High at the Sydney Cricket Ground, and uh, he just shot through very slow. They had a towering display, and he's a major role in their two tries, and nearly another one. But um, well, that's two tries really. They've um, they've lost. Fairfield. You'll notice this young uh, Alexander at the heels of this Parramatta pack. Uh, his speed and penetration is quite devastating once he's on the move. Fed by Gale, ride win it. Good push too. It was a good shot. Mm. Nice and tight and snug the scrum. So Craig Woods. No, Walton it is. Getting it to uh, Monty. Oh, bad luck. Over the shoulders of Fraser. But it's a double knock on. I think they've got to be a little more careful with their with their passes. Um, possession's a little hard to get, and when you've got it, you've got to just got to cling onto it. You've got to guard it with your life. Scott Gale now. Shooting it straight away to Bevan. Stand oh, in there. Oh, they're two up here. here. Here goes Monty Give it now. He's trying to go himself, and he had Be uh, uh, Brendan King there, who recovers just as well. No, uh, they've turned it over to Fairfield. Uh, Monty, I thought it should have given it to Brendan King. Yes, he should have, and then he tried to repair the damage, and it cost them possession. They were overlapping by two if he had have done it. However, it's Fairfield and Marvello going for the double blues as uh, he's hit 30 metres out from Ride's goal line, and Fairfield with it. And from dummy half is Alexander twisting his way up to just outside the quarter as Warren Roberts came in to make sure of him. And now they line it up. Langmack on the inside backflip pass to Chris Levick. And he takes it up beautifully. 15 metres out from Ride's goal line. Chris Levick again, very prominent at attack. Whirling it out. Chris, uh, Langmack getting it to um, Mannix. Around the corner, Lang, uh, Langmack himself held up. And Ride come away with it. Oh, the fluctuation of play. Ride and it's uh, Paul Bevan, very slowly to his feet, very gingerly. But I can assure you, uh, he has quick recovery rate. And as you saw, that was a real arresting tackle in combination of three. And Stanton doing his darndest uh, to puncture them. Our uh, Walton again having a beautiful game. Brings it away from dummy half, and that's a 15-meter gain for Ride through the running of David Walton, flashing feet in the scrum, and likewise in the open. Stanton gives a nice one. Gale is there. He gets it. Oh, no. Out wide. Craig Woods and Garner has him covered. Parcels him up. 10 metres short of their own side of halfway, and Gale nudges it forward, looks for the line, finds it. Yes, uh, I think they've got to start thinking about using the kick a little bit to break up the, uh, the defence. Defence yeah. both sides have been excellent. Aren't they? Excellent. And Scott Gale can do it too, Alan, because yes. he's such a gifted footballer, has fine control in uh, centre field, and uh, with the little chips and line kicking, he can do it. So Fairfield called back his Greg Alexander. Defeated once more for Fairfield. And he'll give a penalty, a differential. And this time it's against Marvello with feet across. So Sirinan with the big boot. And he's so tall, stands head and shoulders over his teammates. And I should imagine a 
most of the Fairfield boys. Puts that reliable right booter. It's a lovely right swing of the ball, but not finding touch. Oh, dear. That was a cardinal mm, sin. That's a little unforgivable, that one. Well, it's worked out all right. They'll get possession now. It's five all and with only two minutes to go before half time. Will you see a repeat dace of the half time score of last year from these two same sides who worked out the 81 final? So it's a goal line drop for Fairfield. Langmack doing the honours. Beecher allowing Bevan to take it forward for Ride. Now Walton himself works it from dummy half. Ten metres out from Fairfield's goal line. Sirenen operating a dummy half. He goes the right. Novello is there. Garner covers him and so too does Tommy Nichols. Full of cover. Bevan holding it up. Pass Gale. They get it out on chop out on one. King but all well marked. Stephen Adams like a good winger came in from the right flank. Mannix was there. They keep it on the left. Beecher. Taking the tackle, gives it neatly into Fraser, weaving. Jablonski is over in cover. They're eight metres out, and Beecher fires at the gale. Little chip, not good one. P plucked out of the air by Langmack, and Fairfield saved for another day. And will require some trainer attention, as uh, he took a couple of tackles there, and was well and truly buried. Yes, it's one of those, as you, <coughs> we keep on saying, one of these fluctuating games, and it... Even in the last second, it, it could be decided in the last second as, as it has in the last three or four or the last couple of minutes in the last um, two or three matches, the uh, finals that we've had here. Uh, these teams, they're never beaten. They're, they just keep on coming. You know, they're, they're just marvellous footballers and they defeat. They can't even spell it. <laughs> Hot favourites in many a person's eye. Fairfield tonight and, of course, Holy Cross Ride looking for their second successive title well and truly in their sights according to their supporters so Langmack recovered heavily winded Chris Lebeck tidied up by Sinclair from dummy half working it now is Duncan Wick he's got a good burst of pace too good style nice thinker this boy too just dropped short of his own quarter Marvello and comes away for Fairfield they seem to be bunching a lot um, Fairfield at this stage Santos gives it again to Duncan Wick and he makes good ground right up to midway between the quarter and halfway in his own territory. Jablonski, Alexander, long pass out to Mannix, hitting his top path one, can he regain, looks for support, bodies on the inside, couldn't unload it, great running from Max Mannix, the junior decathlon champion of 81 and boy didn't he cut loose as the halftime hooter rings out. Yes, it, um, he's got a ton of speed and he's a very, very dangerous customer, as we saw then. He just cannot be given a, an inch, but once again, congratulations to the cover defence. It was just superb. Well, you've, got, a, be, you've got to be good to score. In a cracking first half, we have a scoreline that is the same as it was this time last year. Uh, five all in this 1982 Commonwealth Bank Cup final between Patrician Brothers Fairfield and Holy Cross College ride five all and after this break we'll be talking with Alan Clarkson about the first half. Ladies and gentlemen, let's have a big round of applause for the Australian Rugby League. Stand by. 
Well, I don't know how they played out there in that first half. Of an unusually humid evening here at Leichhardt, but the halftime score news is that it's 5 all between Patrician Brothers Fairfield and Holy Cross College Ride. The same as it was this time last year between exactly the two same sides. But we've had a performance in the first half as, you'd, as you would well expect. Rugby league of the highest order and how it should be played with uh, just thrilling, clean and tough. We've had some incessant attack from both sides. We've had some jarring defence. We've had two tries, both gems. And uh, it's just been hard body contact stuff for the remainder of the match. How does it compare to last year's, Alan? Well, I think it's as good as last year. They just seem to get better and better. I think the quality of the of the of the players that they're just getting improving all the time. We saw a few of the players uh, that from last year. They're they're backed up again, and they're naturally one year older and one year more more football. So they're quality footballers. Uh, I can't help thinking, you know, looking at those, how many I'll be writing about in grade football in another couple of years' time. Mm. Uh, there have been so many that have been through this Commonwealth Bank Cup series, uh, Peter Sterling, uh, just to name one, and so many others that have that have gone on and are quality footballers up in grade football now. And, you, and you've seen it in the first half. You're going to see some more in the second half, and you're going to marvel, I feel, I always do, at the, the skills of these young men and the way that they play their football. And both sides could have been two further tries up in that they first half. Been. They could have been very, very easily. I think it says a lot for the... I think there was a little nervousness there and probably um, a little overreaction at, at some times. But I feel that the, the defence of both teams, it's just incredible. And it has to be a superb try to crack through that defence. Yes, my gee, they're effective tackles, believe me. Alan, uh, we've seen some very fine individual performances mm -hmm. out there tonight. At the oh. moment, the man of the match in your estimation. Well, I've been particularly impressed with uh, David Walton, uh, the, the hooker for, for Holy Cross Ride. I like the way that he, he does a lot of you know, tidying up work around the rucks, but he's very, very alert and he's made some valuable gains, valuable yardage. Uh, of course, you, you look at Langmack, and Langmack's got every skill that you can possibly imagine. He's just going to develop and he will be a first grade footballer. I don't think there's any doubt about that, like his brother Peter was. Um, Oh, Max Mannix, another one that we saw him make a run just before half time. Uh, he's a decathlon expert of all things, this man. Um, but playing in the uh, in the centre, and he's got plenty of speed, ton of speed, and uh, he's a very, very dangerous man. Well, that's interesting because uh, Paul Bevan led the 2SM scholarship coming in mm. to the match tonight on seven points, followed by Scott Gale on six. Then I think there's Langmack and Alexander, both on five, and Surinan on four. So that's an interesting stage uh, at this particular time. All right, then, well, Alan Clarkson uh, with his summary. And uh, we have the second half of the Commonwealth Bank Cup final coming up, one of the proudest pages in our Cup history, I think you are seeing here tonight. And the next chapter coming up following this particular break. Well, as you rejoin us for the second half of the Commonwealth Bank Cup final, the score five all, and uh, both sides thinking that they are fairly secure in the knowledge uh, that they will go on and win here tonight. Fairfield, I know particularly, coming up with words from the dressing room at halftime, but of course, uh, beating Ride in their own backyard, which Leichhardt virtually is, is as uh, difficult as trying to uh, knock off Borg at Wimbledon, Alan. <laughs> yeah. uh? But it did happen. <laughs> It did indeed. So it's Holy Cross ride with Andrew Sinclair being taken just short of his quarter by Anthony Marvello and ride in the goal jumpers with the maroon shouldering as Beecher making a good run too and he's looking for his winger and gets it out but he's overrun it does Fraser and pick up by uh, Greg Alexander. So ride running left to right of your screens this half and uh, Fairfield of course in the double blues guarding the goal line to the right so we have a new one on for Fairfield and we'll just check the number out anyhow it's Alexander weaving it out to Saltos and uh, he's brought it up just inside the corner with Alexander now to Langmack back inside to Alexander trigger it over to the right trying to outsmart with the little dummy Saltos has support play for him but he's held, throws it anywhere, back fortunately to, to Langmack. Langmack, a stretch pass out to Marvello, taken by Andrew Sinclair. 
but Fairfield uh, coming back with great vigour in the second half, throwing the ball around at will, taken by Walton, 10 metres out, and that's the end of six on Fairfield. Yeah, I, uh, at the risk of harping, I, I feel that they've got to be, both teams really have got to watch their, their handling in the second half. They can't afford to, uh, to give the opposition one tiny inch because uh, with five all, one slip, and that could be all over. Got to be careful of those passes. Scrum 10 metres out from Ray at Ride's goal line, and thankfully for the Maroon and Golds, they've won it. Langmark is over the top of Scott Gale, who made a dart from the heel of the base of the scrum. Straight away to um, Daly, who comes up into the line and looked after by Greg Alexander. Back again, and they keep it on the left this time as uh, Beecher takes it from uh, Gale, and it's anybody's ball again, as you heard Alan speak, and it's Saltos for Fairfield. Chris Levick comes away from dummy half. And he's a very tall and lean second rower. Shakes the buildings when he's got an opening and runs strongly. Marvello oh, out wide, tackle. and again taken by Andrew Sinclair. Having a big game for Ryan as uh, Stephen Adams now playing on the right flank is only five metres out. Alexander himself wrapped up one metre short of the goal line. This is where Wright will be called on if they pull it out here to the left. Langmack getting it out to number 15, the new one. Tommy Nichols misses it. Mannix is over. Pulled out, up, foot. Oh, yes. They strike Buck Fairfield and a moment for Max Mannix to remember. Look at the fans. The hair ground is coming. They lead 8-5. Yes, that was a, uh, a, a magnificent uh, try, but uh, once they had to clear it away, there was no way they were going to get through, and a good recovery here. Very, very good recovery by Mannix, and look at the strength of this young man. No wonder he's a decathlon champion. And it was... Um, a correct decision by referee Jack Danzi and he's touched Judge too. That's McNamara's pass that just goes behind Nichols. Now watch the pickup here of Mannix out of the Monty tackle. Daly has him wrapped up at through sheer determination and strength, forces it down and puts Fairfield in the lead by eight points to five. A very, very good player, young Mannix. Tremendous courage and strength to, to get through there. Yes, he's... Uh, he uh, provides a lot of danger out wide with a lot of pace and uh, plays his part well and truly to the full. So it's Greg Alexander now about to have a crack at the conversion. And what a difficult one it is to almost from touch. Now it's drifted to the right. So the score remains 8-5 in favour of Fairfield override. Uh, Langmack, the news is, goes to 5-8 with Andrew Jablonski off in the second half and McNamara, number 15, uh, is on and Tommy Nichols goes to lock. As you can see, brother Christopher and Kevin Burke, the coach for Fairfield, uh, discussing the situation and the potential situation during the next 25 minutes. Tonight we have grand prizes for spectators and uh, in the past years, again, we want to thank National Panasonic and Easterway Air Conditioning for their contribution to a great final and making those prizes available for lucky numbered winners. So Ride uh, up there outside Fairfield's quarter and trying to contain this blue machine, undisputed rulers and hot favourites tonight. They've had clear-cut wins. They've uh, certainly been the dividends, beating schools like um, Pendle Hill and Katoomba, Gaimea, Marcel and Ranwick, Bo Desert and James Cook. Some big scalps there. Langmack making his presence felt. Good support play coming from Frank Maranese. Coming up from the deep zone and he's already up to halfway. Marvello handling it to Alexander. Quick passing. I'll do it as Chris Levac. Finding Langmark on the inside. Oh. Ghana, beautiful passing. Alexander has split them. The little chip as he got the pace. Four going for it. Alexander, no. Langmark dies. Yes. Fairfield, oh, freeze that moment. Put alongside some of the greats in television because, oh, they've recaptured the impact they've had in previous games. They lead 11-5. Oh, that was just marvellous. We'll just, I'll just shut up and let you watch this. <laughs> That's Chris Levick on the inside to Langmack. He finds Garner, who gives a beautiful pass to Alexander. Watch the little half chip. 
Now there's a race of four. Four ride, Alexander, a nasty, awkward bounce for all. But Langmack, as ever, coming up like a terrier, bounces on it. Oh boy, it's 11-5. Alan and, Clarkson. As we mentioned about Langmack before, and you can see now that we're not exaggerating, that pass he gave out was just football, and it's very, there it is there. Now that is quality football, plus the the pass from Ghana. And then there was the, the backup work by young Alexander. And of course, the lock forward, Langmack, following up as all good lock forwards have to do the loose ball try. Just great football. Great football. I think in previous matches, uh, rarely has a player exerted such influence over a game. All UK, you can look back on the previous winners like Peter Sterling and Benny Elias, Johnny Muggleton, Ivan Henjak. Uh, but uh, this fella has an uncanny evasive style, Paul Langman. Oh, he's beautiful, deft passes. So deceptive at luck. Oh, it's 11-5. Can they pull back here, Alan? Uh, I, I remember saying a couple of years ago when there was a, a spread of five or six points oh, that they were gone, but um, they're never gone, these teams. They, they'll come back. They'll come back. But I don't think they'll be able to do it tonight, right? They're, um, Alexander. Another good flight said, well, it's a good ball. Oh, yeah, good ball. 13-5 is the scoreline in the Commonwealth Bank Cup final. And uh, a marvellous part the fans are playing here in this final. The excitement generated. Hey, you must be feeling out there in Fairfield, I'll tell you. <laughs> oh, heavens. So, play to restart on halfway and ride with a lot of work ahead of them. An eight-point leeway has Fairfield. 15 and 16 about to come on for Holy Cross Ride, and that'll be John Perkins in 15, Ian McKenzie in 16. But again, it's Ride on the defensive effort with Garner with headgear off, and he says, let me get back into this. That fellow with the blonde uh, uh, mop of hair, I might tell you, suffered a fractured cheekbone eight weeks ago, and isn't he into it tonight? What a courageous and miraculous uh, comeback for Mark Garner, number 13. But this is 15, McNamara playing it. Coming onto the oh. ball, Tommy Nichols takes the three of them and almost um, the bores a hole through them. He's all, he's just up to halfway. Marvello gets it out to Alexander. Alexander says, oh, openings are up here through the middle. Let me go. And it's Monty in there and a host of them. Sirenin doing big work. Marvello getting it to Langmack, cutting them now, gives it beautifully. Mannix onto the ball. El Supremo when he comes from an attacking position, isn't he? Yes, he's marvellous. Um, I, I can't speak too highly, as I have him, so many other players that I've seen, Benny Elias and what. But uh, he's right and he's well and truly up there in, in, in that calibre of the Eliases, uh, Sterlings, and all, all the good players I've seen go through the Commonwealth Bank Cup. And haven't there been some good ones? Good. So a scrum midway between the quarter and halfway in Ride's territory. It's a put-in by Scott Gale. That's a marvellous competition, this, John. Um, we probably will not take it for granted, but uh, the, the player, I, I know from my son's former school, uh, uh, how much they look forward to playing in this competition. It's just the sheer quality of it. This man has had an outstanding game tonight. The boy who just played it, the hooker, Walton, coming up and meeting them sprinting in defense fairfield now their ears pinned back and ride with it all ahead of them bevan trying to do his familiar little dummy and a flick pass inside wrapped up by daly referee uh, danji says it moved back so walton comes up now they can do something scott gale goes himself with a beautiful break support play bodies there but fairfield but knocked forward by Fairfield as double well. Knock on. So we'll have a double knock on and the scrum to go down midway between the quarter and halfway. Fairfield's territory this time. Yes, they look very, very good, Fairfield, but uh, when you've got a player like young Scotty Gale in your in the opposition, you're never down. No. He's a dynamo. You're, you're, he's um, it was very, very close then. If someone had been a little away from he with it, and Daly makes a break. But cover from Alexander, but he's not held. And gains another five valuable metres just outside Fairfield's quarter. Walton spiraling it out to uh, uh, Gale through out to Sirenin. And Sirenin is blocked just outside the quarter. Walton again hurries in there to dummy half. They're well covered over there on the left. Monty, they won't break it. Garner is around him. Body jarring stuff out there at the moment. Ride 
trying to do so much with it. Stanton, wide pass. Gale going himself, hurdles one, back up, Bevan. Bevan himself goes through one. No, oh, a bit short. The look forward from uh, Ride with one of his customary great runs. Back again now, Stanton, stretch pass. Gale, long pass, yes. It's oh. Craig Wood to make fight back. Yes, oh, pace and control, thrills. Deadly finish there. It's all happening at Leichhardt. They've rolled another race, says Ride, and they're back in the match, 13-8. Well, uh, I think everything's just falling into place for us tonight. We just mentioned that with Scotty Gale you're in your team, you're never beaten. That was a magnificent pass he threw out. I think even I could have scored that. Well, maybe not. Maybe not. Very important um, statistic here, of course, that Ride have won the scrums 8-4. And with that sort of possession, if they can keep that sort of possession, they're going to hammer right back here, and Fairfield will have to watch themselves. Well, I want to tell you that that David Walton, the hooker, in previous matches, I think uh, he won the scrums 13-6 against Benild, 10-4 against Carrick. But what are, the, what are the scrums now, Ray? 8-4. 8-4. Well, if he keeps on going, uh, it'll be like uh, in other matches. Uh, they needed a mustard poultice to get the ball away from him, I'll tell you. He has it planted now on the quarter. And about eight metres in from touch, Craig Woods. Do they need this one? As they say in the classics, it's a whole new ball game now. He's a side booter too. Mm. Oh, and there's no sweeter. Oh, oh. yes! No oh. sweet to sight than that in a final. And Craig Woods, the Ride Hearts pump again. And it's 13-10, they trail by three. Won't that give the boys a little lift now? The Ride fans, as you're probably here, roaring them home. Can Ride snatch a last minute? Well, I know it's only 15 minutes to go, but a last minute oh. reprieve. Roars going into crescendos, of course, when he kicked that goal, let me tell you. So Ride, all covered there by McNamara and Saltus, and Bevan was well and truly stopped. Here goes Walton, 30 metres out from his goal line, coming up in the dummy half. Getting it to Warren Roberts. Tommy Nichols in there. Parcels him up. Again, Walton trying his luck. McNamara rounding him up this time. Last one coming up on ride. Beecher. Regained beautifully. He's got bodies on the left. He can't get it. Oh, stumbling up to uh, midway between the quarter and halfway. And... Uh, that's where the scrum will go down. Oh, Ride coming back. Entitled to look back on their first night of the year with pride when they staged two great matches. They played their 1980 Premiership side, their 1981 side, and won one and drew one. Yes, well, as always in the final, you can just sit on the edge of the seat for the, for the, for the full time. It's, um, and it's a long way from being over yet. What have we got, about 15 minutes to go? Yep. And the 2SM $4,000 educational scholarship to be decided tonight, as I said at halftime, Paul Bevan on seven from Ride. One point back is Scott Gale from Ride. And then on five points, Paul Lamack from Fairfield and Greg Alexander from Fairfield. And the only other player with a chance of snapping up the big prize, Paul Sirinan on four points. But I do want to thank uh, my station radio 2SM for their continued support with this most, I think, prestigious award. And I know a most appreciative award from all parents and, of course, the students. And I know that everyone is looking forward to the announcement, uh, which will be um, broadcast for you during the presentation uh, up on the dais tonight of the Radio 2SM Player of the Year Award. Previous winners, of course, uh, Peter Sterling, uh, Benny Elias, Johnny Muggleton was unlucky. He drew and uh, on major awards, I think it went to Stephen White. Not a bad player. <laughs> Duncan Wick for Fairfield. Marvello. Having a big run, Saltus. A rounding beacher. Sinclair, Roberts. Marvello, the touch to Alexander. The little dummy splits him again. Warren Roberts rounds him up, though. Eight metres short of halfway, but they're in Ride's territory now. Through McNamara, now Langmack. Langmack, oh, had a runner in Tommy Nichols. He was looked after, though, by David Walton, had he taken the ball. But Langmack uh, held up now in centre field. 
Now they give it to Alexander. Looks for the line. Booted by Craig Woods. And a scrum midway between the quarter and halfway in Ride's territory. A very vital scrum, this one. The scrum's now 8-5 in Holy Cross's favour. Fairfield won the last scrum. If they can win this one, they're going to put a bit more pressure back on Ride. 13 minutes to go. Greg Alexander dummying this time last year. Ride were down 5-11. Then Brett Gale with two tries. Benny Elias was one and it was 15-11 and all over. Have we signs of another grandstand finish? Three points separating them. Fairfield with Langmark to his feet. 30 metres out. Oh, quick. Oh, did well to Regain recover then. My word. Mm. <clears throat> Marvello a dummy half. Looks left and right. Works his way up to the quarter. Takes the three tackles. Now Alexander, the first receiver. Out wide, Langmack. Inside. Nichols oh. flips the little runner. And Garner was on the inside alley. Out wide was Chris Levick. Oh, the back row trio together. There goes Alexander with the drop. Not successful. Referee Danzi fades it away. So um, 11 and a half minutes left for play. It's 13-10, Fairfield leading ride. Hands on hips, bellowing, battered and wearied, both sides. Fairfield, Walton looking tired, but never gives up. Taken by Soltis, just outside his quarter. Dale a dummy half with Daly now. Feeding Sinclair, or Roberts it was who came through. Now back it comes to Daly. Plucked out of the air by Sirenen, but uh, the knock-on will have a scrum just outside the quarter. Yes, uh, oh, here come the, the reserves on. Number 16 on for uh, Ride, and that's Ian McKenzie. I might mention that there are several in that Holy Cross pack that are suffering with flu. Two of them, three in fact, got out of bed today to front the final tonight. Yes, I was down in the dressing room beforehand and a lot of them there were coughing and how they're keeping on going with this flu thing going around, I just don't know. So Tommy Nichols out wide and Warren Roberts was one of the coffers and he's off the field. So 16 is on. <clears throat> Langmack now in control, mid-centre. Gets it to Garner. Garner wanting to pass, but uh, well and truly contained by Scott Gale. And Monty was there for assistance. Langmack again says, come with me. Oh. Gives it beautifully. Maddox is going for the corner. Oh, held up. He must be only centimetres away from the goal line. So they come up and greet McNamara. And referee Dancy says six more. So a dummy half is Maddox. Langmark quickly to Alexander. Chris Livick. Alexander outsmarted us all. Holds it up. Eight minutes out. Eight metres out. Langmack weaving. And he's five metres out from Ride's goal line. Can they contain this defence? Marvello from dummy half. He's three metres out. And Ride with the ball. Great stuff from Beecher. Oh, their form exceptional. Both sides revitalised by that half-time by their architects, both coaches, Kevin Burke and, and Peter Bevan. And uh, boy, what an exciting match. So Walton, a dummy half. Scott Gale doing the little step. Ten minutes left. 13-10 is the score in favour of Fairfield. Beecher whirling it out to Daly. Out wide is Sirenen. And I think he's lost it. They've turned it over to Fairfield up through Tommy Nichols, I think. No, it was uh, Saltas. Langmack. And he's pinned. And we're waiting for Paul Langmack. And this is the second time he's been down injured and requiring trainer attention. The first, he was uh, dreadfully winded. Uh, he's receiving it now. But uh, Fairfield uh, are right out of the box pack. If you have a look at them tonight with Nichols and Kruslovic and uh, Garner and Langmack, a formidable task, I think, for any opposition to handle. And their set of backs have been in top form, sparkling form, uh, if rarely spilling a pass. And their forte is attack, attack, attack. And this is exactly what they're doing, threatening Ride's goal line at the moment. There's been some interesting statistics in this half. Uh Fairfield have won the last three scrums, which has enabled them to put a little bit more pressure on, and there have been no penalties in this half at all. 
And that says a lot for the quality and the standard of both players and for both teams, I should say. Alexander, an unbelievable solo run from 18 metres out to a metre short of the goal line. The little half back from dummy half Marvello. And Marvello is tied up. Langmack himself scoops a pass out. Maranese, Garner. Held McNamara going himself for the line. He's a big sturdy prop. Held up. He's centimetres short again from the goal line. This sustained attack. How can the defence hold up to this? And the penalty to Ryan. Yes, uh, he, uh, uh, Janzi was right on the spot there. Um, saw that the uh, in his over anxiousness he didn't release the ball. Tried to tap it forward to catch them off the guard, but uh, you have to release the ball. Well, apart from this right, this fair field attack, the defence of fair of Ryan has been great. It's been sturdy. It's been determined and drum tight, Alan. Oh yes, yes. As uh, I've said before, it has to be. An outstanding performance or an outstanding even an individual effort or team effort to get through the defense of both teams six minutes left Gale and taken this time by Andrew Saltis and Walton is there to get it out quickly to Daly and up on the line is McKenzie and McKenzie makes a break oh. Siren and has it because he can get it out he had three on the left you wouldn't believe it He's a few metres short of his own side of halfway and Daly splits him from dummy half. Sirinan, he can't unload again because the defence is smothering. Right on halfway, Ryan with six minutes up their sleeve. Here goes Stanton, gets oh. a beautiful ball to Sinclair. He had runners but he couldn't pick up Monty who came on the burst. Yes, they're, uh, they're putting everything into this. They remember last year when they, on the year before when Things happened in the last few minutes of play and the, the match was virtually decided once in 30 seconds once in two minutes from the finish and it could very very well happen again ride holding out with just six minutes to go the fans uh, already standing over there urging and willing them on My, Fairfield of course can't wait for the Hooter ride thinking otherwise Alexander playing it Duncan Wick Running from dummy half. Taken by McKenzie. They're into Ride's territory again, not letting up. Langmack firing it to Maddox. He cut the flu like a capster tar. Look at him go, he's over. Jack Dancy, the decision. Oh yes, a candidate for the try of the year, Ray Warren. Oh. Let me tell you. Superb, classic. The score of Max Maddox, a cracker. Yes, a superb try. And once again our Mr. Langmack is gave him gave uh, Mannix the pass and uh, once Mannix saw the open territory that was it and uh, that I feel is definitely it as far as the, the final is concerned it should be all wrapped up now but you can never tell oh didn't he go through yes but what a beautiful pass wasn't it a there it is the pass, pass from Langmeck and look at this fellow looming that leg drive and the shoulders and look at the determination gritting his teeth Comes it in, does um, uh, Daly, dropping short, and over. With Lloydy Fraser back there to uh, try and cut him off. But what a game from uh, Langmack, from Alexander, from Max Mannix. Fairfield, the big guns. They were super confident of completing the hat trick. This will be their triple crown. Commonwealth Bank Cup three times. And that confidence in full bloom at the moment. And I feel that Ride's expectations are gradually fading like, Alan, I think the last rose of summer. Yes, yes, or the last rose of late spring or whatever it might be. But it's, uh, I, I think both teams have, well, I don't think, both teams have to be congratulated on, on the performance they've put up again tonight. Uh, there. Oh. I don't know who it was, I couldn't pick him, but uh, he needed a cannon, but he touched and it was a cracker goal. And uh, I'm just wondering who that was at Max Mannix. I know Mannix is a kicker. Or is it? No, it's Alexander. It's Alexander. Greg Alexander. I didn't know he could kick. <laughs> what a towering display. Oh, blimey. It's 18-10. I know he got carried away. It's 18-10 with only three minutes remaining. Ride form is exceptional, of course, tonight. And uh, the type of football the crowd has come to see, and they've risen to it. Uh, 
the crowd has been right behind them tonight jubilant fans but um, i think it's another winter of uh, discontent for for holy cross ride and the penalty to them incorrectly playing the ball here's the uh, uh I, I must say that i i i just so much enjoy watching these fellows play football uh, the, these and the way that they play their football um, I think there have been there have been a total of eight penalties with no foul play they play it hard they play it as hard as they possibly can but no foul stuff at all and hello oh Walton uh, dropped it oh geez a superb game the young hooker a meter short and they spread it wide that's Bevan trying to do his tricky footwork and uh, they're about eight metres out from Fairfield's goal line. Ride, never say die. Their fighting spirit coming back again. Scott Gale dropped four metres short of the goal line and the penalty to Ride. Yes, it was a silly penalty, um, dragging the ball away from him like that. Um, and probably waste a bit, little bit of time, but uh, I don't think that's uh, quite in the spirit of it, but still. Fairfield, they're attacking football tonight and their team beautifully balanced and that great aggression to win, Alan, hasn't it been? Oh, the marvellous stuff all the way through. Sirenin. Yes, Sirenin over. I'll give him a yes on that. Paul Sirenin. That's who. And uh, they share the celebrations ride. They still have, what, two minutes up their sleeve and it is 18-13. Well. Uh-uh. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yes. Well, <laughs> there it is. Coming out and snapped it out of the air from Paul Sirenin and over. Hello. So it's 18 15 with the conversion from Craig Woods. Fairfield dwindling their way back. Ride, set in, posi in position. Yes, Jack Anzi has correctly ruled time off. Here they come. Well, I don't, don't tell me. It's, it's not going to be, be a, a <laughs> not a replay. <laughs> well, what about uh, 1980 with uh, Ride and St Gregory's, and uh, Ride were leading, and Gregory scored the last try in the last 30 seconds. 30 of play. seconds. That's right. Can we have it again, Bevan, for Holy Cross Ride? 45, 45 seconds. I think it is. Beecher, Daly. Scott Gale, chop out, out to King. Back inside, McKenzie. Midway between the core and halfway, rides territory. Now it comes to Scott Gale again. Oh, Nelly slicing them. Good cover, though, by Tommy Nichols and Chris Levick. They've been working beautifully in tandem tonight. So has this fellow, Walton. Oh, he's a good organiser at Dummy Harvey. Can win his share of the ball, and Carney Scoot. Here's Stanton. It had done much better on the outside. They were two up and the scrum to go down and seconds remaining, about 15. Oh, <laughs> oh not a very vital scrum, much. <laughs> <laughs> so here it is, the final scrum of the match. The put in by Fairfield. And the penalty Fairfield. Oh, yes. Yes, young Walton had a go for it and uh, earned an extra 10 meters for opening his mouth when he shouldn't have from scott gale from scott gale yeah. and uh, but you can understand that oh, yeah. the last 15 seconds of play they really needed it would have all done it so fairfield finding it touch 30 meters out from ride's goal line my eyesight must have been wonky i thought there was 15 seconds to go so Fairfield taking it up, Marvello. And there it is. There it is. Fairfield are the champions. They can't believe it. They've done it. They've subdued the opposition. Ride Holy Cross, premiers of last year, to give themselves the Commonwealth Bank Cup, the title, the accolades, the unique distinction of having it won three times. The only school to have done it in the Commonwealth Bank Cup. They have defeated Holy Cross Ride in a classic. 18-15, we'll be back with you in just a moment.